A couple of years ago, I found a chemical supplier that was selling discounted chemicals. The guy told me on the phone he was trying to get out of the business, so he was willing to make some deals. I thought I was getting a fantastic deal on iron 2 chloride. 100 grams was going to cost me 10 to 15 dollars for my usual vendor, and here were 500 grams for about 8 bucks. When my rather large order arrived, my excitement quickly turned to disappointment. I should have known better, but the chemicals he sent were mostly ancient. The newest chemicals were from the early 1990s. One of the services I offer is chemical surplus recycling, so I routinely remove old chemicals from school and industrial labs and resell them at a huge discount, but people buying them know they're getting aged materials. Anyway, most of the chemicals I got were perfectly usable, but the ferrous chloride, not so much. Based on the label, I'm guessing it's from the 1970s or maybe the early 80s. They're supposed to be pale green crystals, but instead it's a dark brown brick. This is a chunk from the bottle. When it's put into a small amount of water, the gunk sloughs off and you can start to see the pretty green crystals underneath. If you watch it before I fish it out though, you can see it shrink quickly. The iron 2 chloride is very soluble in water, so this recovery method has substantial losses built into it. Not to mention, it's a pain. What I'd like to do is try a few other solvents and see if I can get the gunk free without dissolving the iron chloride. First, I have to get the brick out of the bottle. I'll let you in on a little trade secret. Now that everything's loosened up, let's transfer it to a beaker so it's easier to deal with. Now's as good a time as any to share some more bad news. Not every chunk of this mess is hiding a big crystal like you saw in the example a minute ago. Most of this is just garbage, plain and simple. In my earlier attempts, I recovered a nice sized crystal and left it out on an open bench for a while. It was only a week until it was completely oxidized again. The first solvent I'm trying is 100% denatured ethanol. It's much less polar than water, and while iron 2 chloride is still soluble in alcohol, my hope is that it's a bit slower to dissolve. However, I can't even get the gunk off easily enough, so I'm going to try to dilute the alcohol a little bit and try an 80% solution in water. It does seem to disintegrate a little faster in the 80% alcohol. I ended up using a little bit of water on both of these trials and I found that the pieces aren't hiding anything good anyway. Which doesn't really matter at the moment. If I can't even get the gunk out of the way, it doesn't matter how slowly the iron chloride would dissolve. I'm not going to waste my time fighting with it. I'm getting similar results with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Acetone is the last of the polar solvents I'm going to try. It does break apart the junk pretty effectively, but once again I have a dud piece. When I initially set about trying to recover this stuff, I thought that using a nonpolar solvent would prevent the iron chloride from dissolving. I tried naphtha which is a completely nonpolar mixture of aliphatic hydrocarbons. I'm recreating that experiment to show that, while it's true, iron chloride will not dissolve, it's completely ineffective at removing the oxidized coating too. Notice that the liquid isn't taking on an orange color like previous tests. That's going to be useful information in a little while. Iron 2 chloride is slightly soluble in benzene, so maybe an aromatic hydrocarbon will be more effective. I don't have any benzene, so this is toluene, and I seem to be running into the same problem as with the aliphatic hydrocarbons. Just for fun, I wondered what would happen if I added 70% isopropyl alcohol to the toluene and go for some kind of mixed solvent effect. It seems like the water separates from the isopropyl alcohol, which in turn combines with the toluene. The top layer does take on a greenish tint, while the water layer is an orange color. This isn't a viable method, but it is an interesting result. It got me wondering if I could exploit solubility. Iron 2 chloride dissolves in ether, but iron 3 chloride does not. The orange color we've been seeing so far is iron 3 chloride going into solution. 
If I can get the iron 2 chloride to dissolve in ether, separate it off, then evaporate the ether, I've got a viable method. Except the ether seems to dissolve some of the oxidized junk anyway. So after all that, water's my best option. My poor plastic forceps have been discolored and slightly melted for nothing. So here's the unfortunate procedure. Pour a little bit of water into a beaker, grab a chunk of the garbage stuff, smash it around for a little while, fish out a crystal of the desirable product, put it on a watch glass, decant the water, inspect the residue, wash it a few times, and then notice that the crystal on the watch glass has dissolved into the very water that came with it when I set it down. This stuff is really soluble. I'm going to exchange the watch glass for a napkin and I will spare you from filming the entire procedure. But eventually I do turn this process into something that's relatively manageable. It's still a real pain though. As you can see by my mess, I've been hard at work. I ended up developing a process that can handle more than one chunk at a time. Dump an amount of the garbage into some reasonably clean water, stir it up so the big pieces have a chance to break up, then decant the water. Inspect the residue and fish out the crystals of iron 2 chloride as they show up. It's sort of like panning for gold. They're pretty easy to spot, but I watched as dozens of them dissolved right before my eyes as I was trying to fish them out. It was very frustrating. Here's a good shot of the panning process. Can you spot the crystal? Yep, there it is. And yes, it's really that tedious. Once I got a bunch of the crystals on the napkin, I'd give them a quick rinse, pat them dry, and then put them into a storage bottle. It took a week or so for one of the crystals to get really oxidized sitting on an open bench. Being in a bottle will prolong their useful life, but not indefinitely. This stuff has a finite shelf life and has to be used within probably a year or so from when it's new. Which means with how quickly I use chemicals, I should probably never order it. I got bored with this whole thing about halfway through the bottle. Remarkably though, I recovered just under 3 grams. I was expecting far less, but I could see the loss of far more. I didn't bother measuring the starting weight, but if we assume half is 250 grams, this was a whopping 1% recovery. But what happened to the other 99%? Well, for starters, I filtered the wastewater and got 2 liters of a mixed iron 2, iron 3 chloride solution. A little more than 2 liters. Before long, all of the iron 2 in solution will oxidize to iron 3. There is also a whole bunch of brownish red iron 3 oxide that came out as a rather fine powder that was pretty easy to filter. Apparently it was a lot easier to filter than it is to get the filter paper open. Anyway, I'll let this dry, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I also combined the last little bit of the filtrate and the rest of the iron oxide washings into this beaker. The whole purpose of getting the iron 2 chloride in the first place was to make magnetite for ferrofluid. I've decided to use some sodium hydroxide to see if I could precipitate something like magnetite. A specific ratio of iron 2 to iron 3 is necessary and ammonium hydroxide is usually preferred if the desired outcome is ferrofluid. I have no idea what the ratio is. Basically, I just wanted to get rid of this last bit of waste somewhat creatively and in such a way that I could do some math to see how much of the iron was really recovered. After the addition of way too much sodium hydroxide, I let it settle a while. There we go. Let's check the pH. Yep, that was way too much sodium hydroxide. Another quick gravity filtration, and that will be that. In hindsight, I should have done vacuum filtration so I could wash it better. There's sure to be some excess sodium hydroxide in the final product. Okay. 
interestingly, this product looks darker than the insoluble residue from the bottle. I'm not sure what I'll do with the second half of the starting material yet. I'm also not really sure what to do with the recovered iron 2 chloride either. I might try a small batch of ferrofluid and just see what happens. As for the rest of the materials recovered, no idea. I'm supposed to be cleaning out the chemical storage, but instead of getting rid of one bottle of garbage chemical as I had intended, I've still got it, and I've added five more. In the next video, I'm going to use up some chemicals that are sitting on the shelf essentially empty. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.